Hey everyone, welcome back to Rose Stops Buying Stuff. As you can see today, I am very casually dressed because I am wearing my gym stuff, partly because I'm going to go to the gym as soon as I've finished filming this because, you know, got to get the value out of that gym membership that I don't take from my budget each month. And partly because I wanted a full availability of my clothing because today we are going to make my February capsule wardrobe. <laughs> These capsule wardrobes, I'm going to do one each month. They're not maybe a capsule wardrobe in the, the traditional sense of a capsule wardrobe. So what I want to do with this is use it as an exercise to almost rediscover my wardrobe. So it's maybe more of a, a monthly wardrobe rediscovery through curating a capsule wardrobe for that month. And it's going to be more of an exercise for me in trying to fix my long-term issues with shopping by make me really reevaluate why did I buy certain items in the first place, what do I enjoy wearing about them, why are there things I want to get rid of, just really re understanding my wardrobe which to somebody who shops in a normal, mindful, positive way probably sounds a bit silly but if you are like me and you open your wardrobe and go I own all these clothes and don't know what to wear it's because we don't know our wardrobes well enough and realistically it sounds really silly but I think that is the majority of us. I think more of us don't know what's in our wardrobe than do know what's in our wardrobe. So that is what these little monthly capsule wardrobes that I'm going to curate are about. Let's just jump on into it. At the start of each month I think what I'll do is start by going through the last month's capsule wardrobe and evaluating that before creating next month's capsule wardrobe in the same video so these will probably do you know what I was going to say these will probably be quite long videos but I've sort of accepted if I'm going to have a YouTube channel and do it the way that I want to do it I'm a verbose person and my videos are going to be long I when I had my old channel in the past I tried to consistently cut things down because I thought nobody wants to watch a video that's over 12 minutes and then I wasn't happy with how I came across in certain things or I didn't feel I'd thoroughly explain things or that I'd cut things out that I thought were important and not given a good representation of myself in a bid to try and fit with the sort of mainstream 12 minutes or under video ideal. So yeah, my videos are probably all going to be long from here on out because I'm giving myself permission that if I'm having this YouTube channel and I'm starting it and I'm going to stick to it that to do that I need to do it in a way that's true to me so the videos are probably going to all be long. Let's just accept that. But since I don't have last month's capsule wardrobe to go through with you I will use this starter portion of my February capsule wardrobe video to explain what the capsule is about, what I'm hoping to learn from it um, and how it's what the components of it are because that's where there's a process to this rather than just trying to curate items that go together. Why do I want to have a capsule wardrobe? The main reason that I think most people are drawn to a capsule wardrobe and the, the main benefit for a lot of people is it's a lot less mental stress in that you have curated everything, you know you love everything and you know everything goes together. To an extent yes I want less stress, we all want less stress in our lives so that sounds great but I'm not interested in, I'm never going to be a minimalist, I'm never going to be the person with capsule wardrobe for their whole wardrobe. What I want to do is work towards my full wardrobe being a capsule wardrobe in the sense that I know it really well. So right now for example um, I have items that I'm like, say it's a skirt, I'm like I love that skirt I have nothing else that it goes with but I know I love this skirt. This skirt should stay in my wardrobe because it brings me joy but I don't know what to match with it. Now in the past I would then have solved that by going and buying something to match with it which I can't do this year because I'm on my no buy. What I want to do is get to a point where I know my wardrobe well enough to know that I probably do own something that would match that item but I just can't think what it is because I have so much stuff and I wear the same things like so many of us on routine, I can't call things to mind and I have so much stuff that even when I'm visually looking at my wardrobe it's like things disappear into one another so for example if I've got my shirts 
and the sleeves are hanging down, then in theory I should be able to look at that and see all those shirt sleeves and go, oh, that's this shirt, that's that shirt, that's this blouse, that's whatever, that's this long sleeve top, but I can't because they're crammed so closely together that it's not a nice line where I can visually see everything. It seems like it's getting really sunny outside, so I'm sorry if the video is getting super, super whited out. Scotland, natural light, not the dream. So what I'm not trying to do is go down this route where I have this very structured capsule wardrobe where I have X amount of items at all times and they all must match each other. I think a really key part of that kind of capsule wardrobe is really having one style that you can add trend items to, but there is a core part of your style that is a certain aesthetic. And quite often with a capsule wardrobe, it is that very chic, neutral, minimal French aesthetic, which is so beautiful on so many people. I'm not slating it. I completely see the draw of it because it does. It looks so chic, so beautiful. But I kind of have, and I, I don't know if this comes because I studied theatre and I think my love of fashion started with going to the theatre as a child and seeing costumes and being very interested in what any item of clothing told you um, and signified about the person who was wearing it and what you should expect from them and I think I really channel um, whatever energy I want to channel for a day I will really take from my wardrobe and that doesn't bother me that I do that but it does mean that there are days when I want to look like a 1950s you know American housewife and there are days when I want to look super modern and there are days I want that French minimal chic and there are days that I want to like put on a business suit and feel you know like a girl boss like I have all these different aesthetics so I'm never going to have a streamlined wardrobe because I can't have only one aesthetic does that make sense I hope that makes sense and I'm not interested in having one aesthetic that's the thing I'm I love clothing and it is an expression of me and I'm okay with that. I've sort of circled this idea for a really long time of being like, you don't have to express yourself through your clothes. And you don't have to. That's the thing. I understand that I don't have to. I don't do it because I feel a pressure to do it. I do it because I really enjoy it. And that's, I think, why I'm okay with it now. That's why I've made my peace with it is that it's something I know that I'm doing for myself. It's not actually something I'm doing because I feel a shortfall on actually feeling something. So I'm trying to tell the world that I have something by dressing a certain way. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So yeah, for me, it's not about taking that skirt that I want to match with something in my wardrobe and don't know what it matches with. Actually being like, no, no, to earn your place in my wardrobe, you must match five other items and those five other items must match and other five other items and whatever. I completely see the benefit to it but it's it's not really practical for me and I'm fine with that. It's just about me getting to know my wardrobe enough to look at that skirt and go, oh you go with that jumper and if that is one jumper that that skirt goes with and that's one outfit, it's fine because I know that those things match rather than that skirt being on its own in my wardrobe whilst the jumper is, you know, folded somewhere else. Actually, on that note, in case this is really stressing any of you out with this knitwear that's currently hanging, it's hanging for the purposes of this video and I do fold my knitwear just to, just to get that out there. I know you shouldn't hang knitwear. If I know what that skirt matches, even if it's one item, it's it, I'm ahead of where I am at the moment where that skirt is in my wardrobe and I don't know what it matches at all. It's it's not about me super kind of reducing my wardrobe down and having everything be mix and match. That's not what this exercise is about. I'm really sorry this floor is super creaky. I'm trying not to move but it's, it's not natural to me to not move. Keeping in mind it's not then about me overhauling my whole wardrobe down to being this traditional capsule wardrobe. What it is about is about the 30 Wears project. 30 Wears, as far as I'm aware, was started by Olivia Firth and her team over at EcoAge and they have this thing where when you buy something you should want to wear it at least 30 times before it should be considered a decent purchase. Obviously this year I'm not buying anything but when that phrase first sort of came into sort of mainstream, well I suppose it's still not actually mainstream consumerism enough, I think there's still so many people who consume in such a mindless way, but when it first entered my vocabulary, and this is the irony of the situation I'm in, is that for the last three years, 
I have been aware of eco-age and I've been aware of trying to be a bit more eco-friendly in my consumerism but I st even though I've made that effort and I'm definitely improved from where I was like I'm still so many miles away from being eco-friendly so this isn't going to be an eco-friendly channel or anything I'm not an authority on that I'm just quite into this idea of 30 wears that's how I'm trying to be eco-friendly is by a I'm doing my no buy this year so that's no consumption as such anyway but by seriously reducing my consumption and that's the first thing any of us can do before you get into where you shop and the nitty gritty of that because it is a minefield um, and I'm not an authority so I'm not going to be discussing that really but I do want to consume less and use more and 30 wears is a good way to do that but when the phrase first came into my shopping vocabulary I was so blase about it because I was a bit like of course I wear things 30 times like for God's sake and that's partly because I, I hoard things I know I do I've definitely got declutter guilt which I'll talk about got a lot of guilt guilt is a theme of my life that I need to work on so yeah guilt is a thing but whilst I was sitting being really smug about the fact that I had clothes that I'd owned for ages and of course I was wearing them 30 times because I've, I've owned that thing for seven years so of course I must have worn it at least 30 times like that's laughable but with the volume of stuff I own I could really easily own something for seven years and not wear it 30 times and not realise it. I have this concept of what is new in my wardrobe and what is old and new is generally the idea that it's come in in the last month not that it hasn't been worn. So I have things in my wardrobe that I don't think of as new that have been worn maybe once or haven't been worn at all yet. Clear way to see that is holiday clothes. So I live in Scotland. <laughs> it's not warm, it's not sunny. And particularly for me, because I like Disney holidays, I have clothes that I will wear at Disney that I would not wear at home. If I say, I've been to various Disneyland Paris trips that I can't quite number off the top of my head, but I know my Florida trips, for example. I went once in 2013, once 2015, once in 2017 and twice in 2019. So that's five Florida trips since 2013, plus various Disneyland Paris trips. But again, Disneyland Paris, colder, probably not wearing the same clothes. I have a dress that is my Epcot dress. That's how I think of it. And I wear it every time that I go to Epcot and I get my picture taken with Mexican Donald wearing the dress because it complements his outfit. Now, I might have owned that dress since 2013, but I've worn it five times. So, when I really started to think about it, I was like, I cannot be blasé about the idea that I think things have earned those places in my wardrobe because they've definitely had those 30 wears just because they're old. When you own the volume of stuff that I do, that is not an indicator of how many times it has been worn. If that's the case, then why capsule wardrobe? Why this exercise and why not decluttering? Number one, I have declutter fear. With beauty stuff, it took me a year and a half from starting my no buy at the start of 2018. It took me a year to realise that actually just one year of not buying new stuff and using what I could was not enough. And it took until I had somebody I could actually pass that on to. It was this, I had too much guilt to throw stuff in the bin unless it was properly expired and beyond the point of use. I really had to work through that. Now, with clothing, there's this kind of that point of expiry isn't going to happen naturally the way that it will with beauty products. So point of expiry on clothing is when you have worn them out. You're not going to, nothing's going to expire unless you like obviously leave it in like damp or something, which I'm not. So nothing I own is going to expire by itself, clothing wise. I'm not bad at donating things to the charity shop if I catch them early enough, but where I'm really bad is when something is past the point of being like, this is past its best, you really should get rid of it. And I know it's kind of done and I know it looks a bit shabby and I know I should get rid of it, but I have too much guilt. Even though I put it into a textile recycle thing, so it's not like I'm putting things in the bin, but I still have so much guilt because it's this thing when I'm like, you don't deserve to be able to get rid of this. You should use this until you physically can't anymore. So I'm hoping the capsule wardrobe will help with that because I'm going to start tracking things for 30 wears. 
And what I quite like about the idea of this is that 30 wears, I haven't made it up. And that means it is okay. Equal Age are one of the authorities, I would say, in terms of putting out information on how to be a better consumer. I feel like 30 wears, they have said it's okay. So that is what I will mark things by at the moment is 30 wears. So the contents of my capsule wardrobe. There are things that I have marked in this book. So I did talk in my January Money Diary about how I've marked things that came in in January and I'm going to start tracking them for 30 wears. So that is my new in 2020 when I'm going to write anything that I get Although I'm not buying things, obviously I get gifted things um, last month and I did use some gift vouchers which are within my no buy and I exchanged a Christmas gift for something else. So things will come in. It's not, being in my no buy is not going to completely stop things coming in. So when things do come in, I'm going to write them down here and track how many times that I wear them within the course of this year. But what the capsule wardrobe is going to maybe focus on a little bit more is this page, which is my 30 wears declutters for 2020. So what I've got here is a list of things that I have too much guilt to get rid of as they are, but I know that they're on their way out. And if I had marked them as having been worn 30 times, that would help me make my peace with separating from them. And I know that it probably sounds a bit mad because if I put them in this list, then I'm like I know I should be getting rid of them and almost like the fact I put them on this list should be like just get rid of it and go but if you don't deal with guilt you won't understand it but it literally eats away at me so I have too much guilt to do that at the moment so this is the way that I am trying to appease that overcome that and hopefully get better at decluttering I think as well it'll help going forward because it will really contextualise what 30 wears means. Each month in my capsule wardrobe, certain items will come from that page, which is things I want to declutter. So the two items that I have here, which are from my things that I want to declutter, are, well, it's mainly this jumper. It wasn't expensive to start with, so this is not about getting cost per wear out of anything at all but I've actually I've just sewn it so a lot of these gems were really loose and I actually spent the morning sewing it and I think that's another thing that this will be really good for is at the point of creating the wardrobe I will notice anything that needs done like that and I will do it rather than whereas I knew these gems and things were loose but I've just been like oh I can wear something else I can wear something else like I'll deal with that I'll get around to that putting it in this means that repair work had to be done. So I think it'll be really good for doing that and doing it in a manageable way as well where it's just what I'm looking at for that month that I'm dealing with. It's not trying to go through my wardrobe and pulling out everything that needs something done to it, which could be a quite an overwhelming exercise. And I think the key to managing anything like this is not overwhelming yourself. If I bring this up, hopefully you guys can see, you know, this fabric is just, it's a little bit bobbly, it's a little bit worn. Um, it wasn't, as I say, the greatest quality to start with. Some of the ones are missing off of it. So for example, this, like the actual stone is missing from this one here. And there's a few like this one here where um, it's obviously just completely fallen off. And the other thing about this is that I'm definitely sure I've worn this more than 30 times. So the other side of that is that this has kind of just stretched out a bit and sort of lost its shape. And it's, it's still fine. That is, that is the thing, I can't just get rid of this because it's still fine. It's not got a hole in it, it's not unwearable, it's just a little bit past its best. But if I can wear this 30 times, then I can justify getting rid of this. This kind of comes hand in hand with this in that I tend to wear these together. I'm not as fussed about decluttering this as such. Um, because I think this is the sort of thing that I might end up turning into pyjamas or something once I'm done wearing it as part of my wardrobe. So this is from American Eagle. I got it. It's absolutely massive and I bought it. It's meant to be oversized and I bought a bigger size anyway. It's one of their, they're called Amazingly Soft. I think that is literally just the name of it. Um, but they're kind of super worn to start with. So it doesn't take long before they go on the shabby side. I say this, I only have one, but I imagine 
you know, I've had other clothes like this where it's that kind of worn fabric, sort of brushed cotton, whatever it is, um, and it's it's got a short span before it goes from being, you know, soft and cosy to being shabby. I wear this under this, um, and once this hits 30 wears, I think I'll probably make it into pyjamas. Once this hits 30 wears, I'm going to make my peace with getting rid of it. So a key component of my capsule each month will be things that I am trying to get rid of, things that I want to work towards decluttering. So almost like a project pan for makeup, I've got a goal of how many times I want to wear them. Once I hit it, I can get rid of the item. That's my first component. Component number two is those new in items. So obviously I'm hoping there won't be many of them over the course of the year, but when I am bringing something in, I want to know how many times I am wearing them. I want to figure out the things that I hit those 30 wears on really quickly, really easily, with very little effort, versus the things that I sort of put off, even if it's that I'm putting off, putting them into the capsule wardrobe. Figuring out why. What is it? Why is it that certain things get totally hit that 30 mark very quickly, very quickly move from being new into being a really solid part of your wardrobe, and why other things even if they're things you actually might like better, um, don't. So it's, again, it's about rediscovering my own wardrobe or discovering it if it's new in things and really trying to figure out, although I have all these different styles and I don't want to streamline my aesthetic, being able to work out and streamline what I do like in an item and what is going to make it be able to be worn at least 30 times with ease. So for February the item that I've picked from my new in are these Clark's boots which I got in January and um, so I wore these already six. I have marked uh, those two as well for how many times that I wore them in January. I want to get some more use out of these in February. I really like them. They're very comfy. I've been wearing them in a pretty much like day to day basis. I walk to the train going to work and I walk up at night and I live at the top of a very steep hill so I can't go to work wearing really big high heels and if I do I need to walk in flat shoes and take them with me because the hill is perilous, especially in winter because it's quite often icy and because it's it's not a main road, it's a residential road, it does not get any kind of like, like the road gets gritted but the pavements get absolutely nothing so you just take your life in your hands a lot of mornings when you walk down to the train station from where I live. These boots have been absolutely ideal because they have a bit of a grip and they're although they've got a heel it's not, if you guys can see that, it's not a high heel, it's a perfectly walkable heel. Um, they are shearling lined so they're nice and warm. I want to take these to New York with me in November, December this year so I want to try and get some of my 30 wears out of them at the start of the year when it's still really cold and then I want to put these away so that they still look newish by the time I'm going on holiday. So I want to track them in February, I'll see how I feel in March and definitely after March I want to put these away until winter. So I do want to try and get a few wears out of them this month. Point number one, things that I want to declutter that I'm trying to almost project pan. Point number two, things that are new in that I'm trying to make sure I get the wear out of. Point number three, which is where these things come in, are things that I am about to put into storage. So things that are about to become not seasonal. These two are the same jumper, two different colours. They are from the collection that Sam Hewan did for Barber two or three years ago now. So they're, they're not new, but they are big polo neck thick jumpers. So I am hoping to be putting them into storage at the end of February. I want to try and get just a little bit more use out of them whilst it's still super super cold and then you know fingers crossed in March it will be too warm for these. Hopefully, probably not but we can dream. I'm putting these two in just to get a little bit more wear out of them. The other thing with these is that they are dry clean only so it's quite good if I wear them this month then get them dry cleaned at the end of the month and put them into storage and I can, I can make that label of they were last dry cleaned at the end of February. Obviously because they are dry clean only I do wear them with things underneath them so that I'm not sweating onto them. Then I've got this jumper and I've also got a fourth jumper which I will insert a picture of. I've actually left it in work. Now it's not a workwear jumper really it's just something that I threw on to give me an extra layer walking to work the other day because it was so cold in the morning but I took it off as soon as I got to work and I've left it over my chair because I wasn't wearing it to wear at home. But they're both the 
more or less same jumper they're both a game of thrones sort of a christmas jumper i can definitely kind of wear them through winter because they're not explicitly christmasy but again similar to these i'm hoping after february the sort of season for proper wintery jumpers will be heading out so this is a lannister one um, and the other one is a stark one that says winter is coming so i'd just like to get a little bit more wear out of them and then i will put them into storage so those are my components things i want to declutter things that are new that i want to monitor and things that are about to go into storage or become non-seasonal also here just because i thought we're not going to go shop my wardrobe for what i know is going to be two pairs of jeans so i've got blue skinny jeans and black skinny jeans they're not the most exciting um, thing and this is the thing is I don't actually love wearing jeans occasionally like you know I want to reach for them and I feel they are the right thing for an outfit but I'm much more of a dresses and skirts person overall however I live in a cold country and um, particularly in winter so jeans that I can tuck into boots because I can't like it's so cold particularly in the morning when I'm going for my train you know I don't even want my ankle out like I am so cold at all times so I pretty much live in jeans through the winter and that's something that I'm not necessarily psyched about and I feel like I maybe need to figure out some alternatives but yeah my two pairs of jeans are definitely definitely going in because I know that that's what I'm going to wear on the bottom half any of these top halves that I've picked so far I've got my black boots which I'll wear with my black jeans and Again, these kind of actually almost hit as the storage thing. Um, my little brown boots that I wear with my blue jeans. And again, hopefully, I might wear these a little bit in March, but hopefully after that, it won't be the season for these kind of boots anymore. So they kind of just come under a complimentary item like the jeans that, you know, are kind of standard. Um, and also sort of will get put into storage. So now that they are there, I can kind of assess what I'm missing from those components. So first of all I'm really keen to get as much weight out of this as possible so one of the things I think I'm missing is something else to wear under this because if I every time I wear this I would wash it which means that this is then waiting until this has been washed and put back out to get worn again whereas I could wear the jumper twice before washing it if I'm wearing it over something else so I'm feeling like I want something another layering piece to wear under this. I know I want layering pieces to wear under these two that are not that important because you're not going to see them but layering pieces for under these jumpers so that they're not touching my skin and they're not getting you know sweat and whatever on them. Here is my long sleeve top drawer. It doesn't massively matter because they're just getting layered under my other under the barber jumpers. I think I will take out this one. Is this my? Yeah, I'll take this one, go under the grey, um, and then I need to go under the navy. I'll just take this green one, it'll be fine. So, those two tops will do for under the barber jumpers. Hey guys, so I don't know how well you can see, but I'm in front of one bit of my wardrobe. Um, so I'm going to try and find some shirts to wear underneath the navy blue striped jumper. So first of all, let's let's talk about this because I think this is quite interesting. So a lot of you might be like, well, you wear it with the other tartan shirt. So there's another tartan shirt, just wear it, it looks kind of the same and it would be the same vibe. And it would be. But I have this thing where this tartan shirt is new. I got it in Florida. Um, and it's Ralph Lauren, so it's really nice quality. And I have this thing where if something is like new or a bit more special or whatever, I don't, it's like I don't want to taint that item by wearing it with something that I am aware is past its best. So I've got this that would go with that shirt, uh, with that jumper rather, but I don't want to tarnish this by wearing it with that jumper because that jumper is a little bit mm, and this is new and shiny and better quality so that's that's interesting and how I feel about wearing this shirt is that I feel excited about it and I feel like I'll feel my best in it 
and I'm I'm basically admitting that's not how I feel in that jumper because I know that jumper has had its best days but I'm insisting on in keeping it and forcing myself through wearing it another 30 times before I can get to wearing things in my wardrobe that make me feel like this does and that's really strange that I'm volunteering to do that but it is the only way I think I can assuage my guilt so there's an observation here's exactly what I mean I don't know if you guys can see like I can't see that that I own this shirt like like see when you look at that it's like one two three four white shirts that's what that looks like then you notice number five then there's number six but I don't see it again these are Ralph Lauren shirts I don't want to wear them with that jumper even though these actually are really old so this thing these two shirts are I got these in New York in 2017 December 2017 don't get me wrong so the very end of 2017 I wear these really often they're great they're such good quality I think the way that I feel about these is why I want that other tartan shirt to not be tainted but these are a prime example of when I buy better it lasts and I feel really good in it oh god they're like hung over each other my hammers are fighting I've got two Zara shirts here and I'm going to take them both so if you guys can see this one is it's got this sort of embellished collar which will kind of take the shabbiness of the other one away a little bit sort of takes the outfit just up a notch that it's a nice collar that's coming out um, and then this one just has a plain blue collar. I'm going to take both of these down to go under the blue and white stripy jumper with the jewels on it. So I have certain things over in the back of my door here and one of them is this dress which is new and I discussed it in my January Money Diary. So I'm not going to wear this exact one. This is a dress that I bought that's the backup of a dress I already own. The dress I already own the size that is stopping fitting me at the moment but is vaguely better than this is at the moment um my body is changing and it's actually that's a thing that i think people don't really acknowledge enough is that so many people like myself have issues with foot and in the last two months i have been four different dress sizes i have been a 10 a 12 14 and a 16. that's that's in the last two years that is that's a huge amount of weight that i have gained and lost because i've been in this cycle of food and emotional eating and stuff and I'm doing my best to combat that at the moment I'm trying to learn intuitive eating it's very difficult if you're somebody who has existed in diet culture and you know has had emotional issues and used food as a substance abuse basically to coping with emotions and things to just Eat intuitively as silly as that sounds to anyone who's not ever dealt with that and um, if you've so if you're somebody with food issues it's so so difficult and it, it's definitely it's a journey I'm trying to be okay with it and I'm trying to let my body find where it wants to be and that that's what I'm doing at the moment and I'm not going to talk about it really because it's not something that I feel I've figured out so I'm, I'm not going to tell you guys about it either it's just it's too emotional and it's far too personal to be honest it's too impactful on me to open it up for comments and discussions but that is I think loads of people are in that situation and I don't think we really think enough about as much as it's annoying to look at all the stuff that we own when you actually split it down into different sizes and things you don't own as much as you think you own at any one point but if you're somebody who can say in the last two years I've been four different dress sizes and I'm trying to let my body settle where it wants to be, which means it has changed dress size since November when I bought the one of this dress that I'm going to wear, it's, it's really difficult to declutter and to clear things out because that's probably part of where that fear comes from for me. It's not just that the item might, might need to be used as soon as I get rid of it, but it's also a bit like, ah, but what if I gain or lose weight and I go up to this size again and I have nothing to wear or I get down to this size and I have nothing to wear. It's, you know, it's so easy, I think, for people who don't have issues with food to sit and say, oh, just throw away everything that doesn't fit you. Like, no, because 
I'm a dress size smaller now than I was like a month and a half ago. Like, uh, oh sorry, I shouldn't have said smaller. I'm trying to actually not think of it as smaller or bigger because I feel like I have a positive and negative connotation with smaller and bigger that I'm trying to overcome and I'm trying to just accept that my body is changing and not put a thing onto that change. But that was a month and a half ago that a dress that is now doesn't fit me as well fitted me. It's quite a minefield. But anyway, I don't have much to really say other than that I think that needs to be taken into consideration a bit more when we're judging people for the amount of shit that they own. Um, but yeah, all of that aside, uh, this dress in the other size, I'm going to put that. So I'll take this down because the other one is in the wash. So I'll take this down so it's a placeholder and I know that I mean the other one. So that kind of does me as my smarter option if I've got a meeting or something at work. And I think I will wear that when I go to London on the Saturday for the theatre because I can wear that with those black Clarks boots. So if I'm wearing that in my black Clarks boots, I'll wear my green ASOS coat and I'll take my Del Rey handbag. So my theme is generally black and green. So I want my outfit for day two, preferably another dress because it's easy, it's easy to pack, it's one piece to be black. So let's go into my dresses. Okay, so the second dress, this needs such a good lint roll. Um, is this black velvet skater dress. It's from Marks and Spencers. Um, I have had this for years and yeah I, I know that because I know the internship I had that I bought this to wear to. So I've literally had this since 2016. So as I say I have loads of stuff that I've had for absolutely ages. Um, so it's, it's just a really plain black velvet skater dress. I can wear it with my black tights and those black Clarks boots and it will go fine with my green coat and my black bag. So that is what I will take as my second dress that I'll take to London. And it also gives me something that I can put on and wear to work, um, you know, if I do have a meeting. As much as walking down in the morning wearing tights and boots. It's not really warm enough for that yet in my book. Um, and just to say as well, I will layer thermals under pretty much everything that I wear. Um, so yeah, just so you know where I am layering other things underneath as well when I'm going on about the cold. I will take that and it gives me another slightly smarter option for work but because it is a skater dress it's not super 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 like you know turning up in a really formal dress um, so I could just wear it to work without needing to be like oh I'm dressed for my meeting with so and so today. That will be dress number two so let's go down and see what my capsule wardrobe looks like. Okay so I have brought down the additions that we just shopped my wardrobe for. I have got two dresses um, One's a little bit shorter, so this just comes just above the knee. This is quite long, both black, so they both go with black Clark's boots. This one I will wear with tights with the boots. This one I have been wearing with like thermal leggings underneath when I've been wearing it this month and then wearing it with the boots. So I could just wear tights, but because it's long you can get away with like proper legging. Nobody really sees it. It's just good. So those are two outfits. I have brought down my 24601. Lema's t-shirt, long sleeve top thing, um, and I will wear that under this, so you won't really see this anyway, with my black jeans and the black Clark's boots. Three outfits. Next up I have brought down this that I'll just wear under the navy one. Obviously something navy or black would have probably been better, but I don't own um, a navy or black. I obviously hung this up super well. But this is from Airy and it's just super soft and it is like an under layering shirt so that will go with that and I'll wear that. could actually wear these with the black jeans and the black boots because it's quite a deep um, navy or with my blue jeans and my brown boots so that kind of goes with either bottom half. These with my blue jeans and the brown boots, five outfits and then also the other Game of Thrones jumper will give me six outfits. I'll wear that with either colour of jean because it's grey and blue in it so it tones into black or navy denim um, with whichever boots kind of go better. So that will be another two outfits technically. And then to go with this I have got the tartan shirt, the shirt with the embellished collar and just a shirt with a normal blue collar. So that gives me another three outfits there. So I've got nine outfits here. February is obviously a short month and it's actually the 2nd of February that I am filming this on. So it's only 27 days. So I in theory will wear each outfit 
three times, we'll see how it breaks down. So yeah, I have brought down to accessorise my black Mulberry Del Rey bag. Um, they obviously don't make this bag anymore, but I do really, really like it. I, I think this is the thing is I've actually have always been, my gran has always invested in her handbags and that I've kind of grown up seeing handbags as something you should spend more money on and I've invested in them. I've also invested in shoes. I've definitely got more cheaper shoes as well as my investment shoes and I've not completely overhauled my shoes to all being better investments. By which I don't necessarily mean designer but I mean like if I buy the Clarks boots for example even though my gran bought me them but uh, I know that a pair of shoes from Clarks are a much better investment than a pair of shoes from New Look or whatever. Um, so I'm not completely all there with my shoes yet, the way that with my handbags I think I own one bag from Zara and that's it, every other bag that I own has been an investment piece but they do last and I'm very discerning about handbags and actually the way I shop for handbags and how discerning I am about them is how I want to be about everything that comes into my wardrobe so because they, they do, they stand the test of time and this has definitely had more than 30 wears so I can completely justify all my handbags. So that is my black handbag for going with my outfits that I wear the black boots with. So what I'm missing, I'll get my green teddy coat that I'm going to show you that I will wear with these. I'm missing another coat that I can wear day to day to work and I'm missing a bag for going with my brown boots. I know loads of people would just mix black and brown but it I can't make my peace with it, I'm sorry. Okay, so I am back. So for my brown bag, I am bringing in my Mulberry Bays water. I think this was actually, I got this when I was 17 or 18, so I think this is one of the oldest bags in my collection. Um, and I actually want to send this away to the handbag spa to just get them to give it a bit of a feed and a clean and do a little degrease in the handle. Um, but I do still really like this bag. I stopped using it for ages. See, after they updated the Bayes washer, I kind of had this like, oh, I don't want to use like the old Bayes washer. But I didn't really need the new Bayes washer. Like, I couldn't really justify a new Bayes washer when I had this one. Um, I did actually give this a feed and a spray uh, last week or the week before. But yeah, I want to send it away to handbags fast. So let me know. I've not used any of those services before. Let me know if you've got any experience with them because I'm I'm a little bit nervous about sending my bags away but they're kind of in need of it. So I will use it this month and then it'll be ready for its spa trip. Face washer is getting added in as my brown bag. So coat wise, these two coats relate to each other. That Primark coat of last year. Um, so it's the Teddy coat. I got, it's actually a 16 and it's 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 big made to start with so it's it's really big. But that's what I really like about it. Um, so this goes over, it's even like my really chunky jumpers like that. No matter how many layers I've got on, I sometimes actually wear this over like a waterproof jacket with a hood. And I will some I can wear this over that if it's raining so that I can use the hood from the waterproof jacket. Um, and this just fits, over. it's literally like wearing a blanket. My grand says this is the most unflattering coat that I own. Um, and again, it's probably kind of getting a bit shabby and I've definitely, definitely had whatever I spent out on it, out of it. Um, so I think I will add this to the potential declutters to be noted how many times I wear it coat. Last year was the first kind of, was the start of the teddy coat trend. And I, I didn't know how I felt about it. So I just got the Primark version to see. And as I say, I've loved this coat so much. So this year, well, last year, 2019, I bought this coat which is from a brand called Pieces, but I got it on ASOS and it's a teddy coat, it's green, which I love and it's a bit more fitted, it's less big than the other one, it's a bit less like wearing a blanket and I, I do really like it and my grand's like, that's much more flattering, it's much nicer on you. Um, so it's, it's one of those ones I've got her in the back of my head as well every time I put on the other coat now. So yeah, but I wouldn't have bought this beautiful coat that I love so much had I not bought the other one but I am ready to, I think, start making my peace with getting rid of the other one maybe after this winter is done um, and keep this as my terry coat of choice. When I am wearing these in London, I will take the green coat. And then I'm going to be honest, probably for everything else, I'll wear the other coat because it'll go over my anorak if I need to wear it for walking down, which I probably will because it'll probably be raining. Yeah, this will probably get much more wear 
than this one. I would prefer to have a black. I don't own a black coat because I, wearing black is actually a very recent thing. I didn't wear black for years and then I sort of took a bit of an ocean for black around November last year. Um, but black is not a predominant colour in my wardrobe at all. Um, but I've been getting quite into it and I'm now wishing I had a black coat. But I don't and I'm on an by year so this coat will just get worn for walking to work and back. It doesn't really matter I suppose. I take it off as soon as I get in the building. And I feel like in Scotland in winter all you see of anyone is their coat anyway so you don't know if it matches their outfit underneath. So these are my coats. That is my first capsule wardrobe built. I hope this has been vaguely interesting. I feel like it's been super long. I don't know how I'm going to edit this. I feel like my instincts on it are that it's very casual. I could totally see me in March being like I want all the tailoring and all the high heels and all the like super smart pieces because I feel like it's it's very much jeans and jumpers kind of thing but at the same time it's very practical for what the weather is doing just now and I think that's that's probably something I don't pay enough attention to and I should know better because I know what Scottish weather is like um, but when I'm buying things I just buy things that I like and I don't maybe consider enough if they're practical um, for where I live, for my commuting, for my life basically. I just kind of go I really like this so I'll buy it and I think it'll be quite interesting to see actually in terms of for nights out and things, not that I go in that many but particularly coming up to Christmas this year when taxis have to come out of my budget. I think it'll be really interesting to see what I actually wear because if I'm going a night out, as I say because I live at the top of this really steep hill, I would have to walk in flat shoes and take a bag with my high heels with me which is not necessarily the most practical thing for a night out so it'll be really interesting actually I think to see how this evolves. So this is my first one, it's maybe not the most like aesthetically capsule wardrobe super French chic. It's not that chic at all, never mind French chic, it's just it's, it's not the most chic wardrobe I've ever seen in my life. But it is practical and it'll get me through February and then we'll check in in March how I felt wearing these clothes for a month. How many times I wore each of them and whether I feel closer to being ready to part with any of my declutter potential items. So thank you so much for watching. And I will speak to you in my next video. Bye.